What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So for this week's tutorial, we're gonna use some Mixamo animations and X particles to create this dynamic character that's gonna have these like tracing lines following it. So the way that this all started was a comment on one of my previous tutorials, someone asking how to stick uh, particles onto an object, an animated object. And I'm not gonna lie, it took me hours to figure it out. And all it was, was one button. I was using all these different techniques, none of them worked, and all it was was just one simple button. But hey, I was able to make a tutorial out of it, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Cool, so let's go over here onto Mixamo. Uh, if you wanna copy exactly what I'm doing, then I'll show you where to get the characters and the exact uh, animation that I used. So I wanted to use this mannequin over here. If you just go to characters, scroll down, you can see this mannequin over here. You can use anything you want. The technique should work no matter what character you use. Then let's go over here into animations. And for my uh, animation, I used uh, type and dance over here. And if you want to use the exact same one, you're going to go to page two. And it's this northern soul floor combo. Cool, once you have that, download it as an FBX file. And then, yeah, let's import it into Cinema 4D. Cool, now that we have our character in here, we should have a dancing character. That looks great. I'm just going to bring down my timeline by a little bit. And let's just group this. We can call it Char for Character. Awesome. Let's import an XP system over here. So I have no idea why it's doing this. Uh, when you throw in an XP system, for some reason, the emitter is grayed out. No idea why that happens. If anyone has an idea, uh, yeah, let us let us all know in the comments. But yeah, if you just take it into a separate project over here and now make an XP system, now we have access to it. No idea why that happens, but yeah. Cool, so let's go over here and change our emitter shape from rectangle to object. And then let's set our character over here as our object. And now if we press play, let's just increase the timeline. And now it's shooting particles out everywhere. Great. Let's change from polygon center to polygon area. And then emission over here, let's change it to shot. And the speed all the way down. So now if we press play, it'll just make a shot on the very first frame and then we have our character over here. So there's a bunch of different looks. You can go with this. I mean, if you want, you could change this to like pulse, uh, change this to like 15 frames. And then every 15 frames, we'll get a different look and we could get some like really cool results from something like this if that's something that you're looking for. But that's not what we're trying to do today. So let's go over here, change it back to shots, and in the object tab over here, all we need to do to have the particle stick there is click the stick particle to source object. That simple. And now when we press play, it sticks with them. Awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. Cool. So now over here, we can go into generators, add an XP trail, and we can drag in our emitter. So now when we press play, should get a bunch of lines. Look at that. That's super cool. But we don't want the lines to stay. Well, at least I don't want the lines to stay. Maybe you do. If so, keep the lines there. But uh, for us, I want to go over here and turn off this full scene trail. Let's set it to maybe around 45 with a variation of maybe 20. And now you'll see once it starts going, these lines will start disappearing. So uh, if you want it to be more uniform, turn off the variation. Uh, just in my opinion, the variation looks nice because we will have some that are long and some that are short as it's going. And yeah, look at that. That is super cool. To be honest, this is pretty much the tutorial over there. So if you guys uh, want to end the tutorial here, go for it. But I'm going to show you a few more tips and tricks on how to do the rendering of it. Uh, awesome. So you'll notice that especially over here in the beginning when he does the full kick that is very kind of blocky over here. If you don't want that, we can go over here into the spline, change from linear to B spline, and then change it to natural. And now look at that, we have nice curved lines. This does make it a little bit slower, 
you'll notice it is a little bit slower. It's not playing in real time now, but I mean, if you can just cache it and it should be fine. Cool, so let's go now into our rendering of this scene. I don't think I did anything else. Uh, adding turbulence and stuff like that doesn't really work because I mean, it's just following the trails over here. And also for my scene, I don't really think we needed anything like that. Cool, so we have our character over here. Let's just set up a ground plane. Cool, so to add geometry onto our trails over here, we're gonna go to extensions, octane, and add in a octane tag. We're gonna turn on our hair over here, and now we got a bunch of hair, super cool. So you'll notice that at the end of each hair, it's a open tube, which does not look very nice, unless that's what you're wanting but uh, that's not what I wanted. So over here, we can set the tip to zero. Uh, no, wrong way around. Let's set this to zero, the root thickness. So now we get these really nice thin lines. And I think the front over here, let's maybe set it to maybe around 0.5. So it's a little bit more thin. Awesome. So to texture X particles trails, for some reason, is another thing that took me forever to figure out because I mean you would kind of think that you could change the emitter color over here to like a random color and it would change the trails that does not work you would think if you go into the thickness and color over here and change it to particle trail that it would you know take the particle and use that as the same color but no that does not work either um, you would also think that by adding in the diffuse over here a gradient you know, because we usually use octane gradients, you would think that that would color it, but if we had to choose this, it's only one color. Very annoying, same if you had to use a random color, the exact same thing happens. But all you have to do, another thing that took me forever to figure out, is just use a Cinema 4D gradient over here. And now if we had to load presets, now we get a bunch of variations of different lines. This took me so long to figure out. That's, it's such a simple thing. Cool, so let's go over here into our mission, change it to black body, throw in our texture over here, and let's turn on the surface brightness and just bring this down a bunch. I think the one that I use for my render is the Sky 3 over here. Let's also go into the diffuse and bring that all the way down to black. And now, look at that. We've got this super cool dynamic character that has these really awesome trails following it. So you can add some more things by adding the amount, adding more particles to it, increasing the, the length of the trails by changing how long the trail lasts over here. Uh, another thing that I did for my render is in our Octane camera over here, just to make this look a little bit better and so we don't get these like thick lines, uh, we can just turn on over here in the motion blur and turn that up a bit. So if your character, so you'll see over here that this has motion blur, but our character does not. If that is happening for you in our character over here, all we need to do is add in a octane tag and that should uh, tell octane to use that and we should be able to get motion blur with our character now. Let's just make sure that it works, let's see. Um, why is there no motion blur? Hmm. Okay, so if you're not getting motion blur, just change it to transform and vertex, it seems, over here. And now we can turn this down a lot. Yeah, if you want the exact same texturing on the character, it's a pretty simple texture. I'll show you how to do it. We're just gonna use a diffuse color over here, throw it onto our character. We can turn off our XP system for now just so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna turn the diffuse color all the way down. In the transmission, we're going to select a blue. I used a similar blue to 
the color of the trails and that is pretty much it so that when our trails shine through let me just add in a HDRI over here you'll see that because we have this like subsurface scattering type material I guess more of a translucent material we get these really cool results and it adds a lot of variation in the color over here so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, the actual project file of this was let me show you I can just break it down for you guys if you're interested this project file will be up on patreon for my patrons over there but for everyone else you can create your own scene if you're interested cool so I have three cameras going over here patch press play got my character dancing got this kind of like subway scene going on pretty simple animations over here and then I think this last camera has to be my favorite it has this really um, small lens it's like 10 so it gives us this really cool kind of uh, like kind of fish eye effect but not really fish eye and yeah so there's just a bunch of little variations that I added like some shake to the camera that I have animating over here just to make it feel a little bit real I also took this um, PNG of a train that I kind of cut out and just extruded over here just so that we have uh, something that's going by it's very ugly looking but to be honest it does the trick because it's only there for the first 15 frames and yeah this wall over here was a texture that I found from uh, the French monkey he has some great resources out there so I just kind of took that texture it's a pretty simple uh, image over here it's literally just an image of a wall and I have that uh, over here on all the walls but yeah let's give this like really nice texture then I used just use some uh, bridge assets to put around the scene and a spray painted kind of effect also from bridge just to make it seem a little bit more real another thing that I did was just adding some water to the scene just to make it kind of feel a little bit more real and also so we can get these really nice reflections over here so yeah that is the tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it Again, if you're interested in the project file, it's up on my Patreon. I just want to also say thank you for all the new subscribers and all the new patrons. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the support. It's really great to see how far we've grown in just a year. So yeah, I really appreciate all of you guys. You guys are great. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.